All right, good morning. She decided that she wanted to be real close to me, so she she getting all up under me, trying to get on, you know, this morning. But um, we were not able to get on Facebook via the computer. It keeps saying there's an error, so we are going to use our cell phones and we're gonna keep moving. Good morning to our Marriage Matters family. I am Gerald. I am Millicent. And we are here to serve you this morning, and we hope that you are safe, that your families are safe, and that we are definitely, uh, you know, praying and believing and trusting in God in this time, because that's what we have to do. We have to put our trust in Him, knowing that in the midst of famine, in the midst of pestilence, you can thrive and you can be a light and you can be a support to anyone. So today we're going to have a discussion and you can talk with me, you can talk with Melissa, and you can talk with us, we can share about the joy of the truth. It says the joy of truth and we have several scriptures, at least three. First scripture is going to be coming from 1 Corinthians Chapter 13 and verse number 6. Okay. Uh, the second one will be Matthew. It would be Hebrews 10 and 24. And then the last one will be Matthew uh, 18 and verse number 6. Okay. So I'm going to either need you to go get the other cell phone so that we okay. can be able to go over that. And I'll take a sip of coffee until you come back. All right. All right. Sounds good. So she's going to get the other cell phone so that we can be able to uh, use that so we can be able to look at all of our scriptures. Because normally, we use my phone, but my phone, we're, we're broadcasting. So, good morning, Miss... What is that? All right, good morning, Miss Wilborn. How are you? I had to give me a little coffee, Miss Wilborn. I had to get some coffee. But I hope everything is going well. And we, we love you. We appreciate each and every one of you. And thank you for taking some time out of your schedule. Because I'm pretty sure... You know, people need to go to the store because I do. <clears throat> I need to get in that store and get a few things and then get on back. But um, no matter what, just know that you are protected and that you're not walking around here with no coverage. The blood of Jesus covers all. He covers us all. If that's what you believe in, I want you to be focused on that. I see my mama. Good morning, mama. Hey, mama. Let mama. And so uh, the blood of Jesus covers us all in this time, uh, each and every day. And when we have to deal with these things that are seeming to be uh, kind of long and drawn out, and it seems like there's no, no ending. But in this time, it shows who we really are and who we believe in and who we belong to. So... My wife is back. Mama on there. Look at mama. All right. Good morning. Good morning, so, mama. <laughs> we're going to start out with um, Hebrews 10 and 24. And then we're going to get past that. You know, scoop up and get me some more of this good coffee. Mm. Hey, right. Miss Charlie. Good morning. Good morning. We're doing, we doing the live broadcast on our phone. Because so we extra close this morning. So the computer is not acting right this morning. It refuses uh. to upload. All right, you're going to read that? So 10, Hebrews 10 and 24 says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. You want to go good, use the Good News translation and see how it sounds in there. Okay. There we go. Oops, wrong one. Anybody else on this morning? If you are, make sure that you type in a response because we can only see very little on this cell phone. So if you end this morning, please let us know. Hebrews 10 and 24. All right. And let's see what it says in the Good News Translation. Okay. 10 and 24 says, Let us be concerned for one another, to help one another to show love and do good. Amen. There we go. 
So sometimes when you don't understand something in one version or if it seems like it's a little different or maybe we, we kind of have some differences in the understanding, then I just look at another um, translation. So it says, let us be concerned for one another to help one another to show love and do good. Let us not give up on the habit of meeting together as some are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more since you see the day of the Lord is coming near. It so, is so fitting for this time right yeah, now. Yeah, it is so fitting for this time that, that we are ready. Let's be ready. Let's be ready for when the owner of the house returns back to the house. I read a devotional about that about a week ago. Mm -hmm. And it was talking about be ready when the owner comes back to his home. And it was like somebody went out on vacation for a while and they told the person to watch the house and be, be looking over the house. Okay. And the person that was in the house had fell asleep and the owner had came home, got what he needed, and he left. <laughs> wow. And so then the person that was still there, God had already came and left and did what he needed to do. But because he wasn't watching, that's why he missed the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So in times like this, it just it's just refocus your brain, your mind, your heart. And understand who is really, truly, and totally in control. Who's totally in control. So our next scripture is going to be, uh, hey, it's going to be Matthew, Matthew 18 and verse number 6. Okay. <clears throat> 18 and 6. Yes, ma'am. And it says, if anyone should cause one of these little ones to lose faith, to lose his faith in me, it would be better for that person to have a large milestone tied around his neck and be drowned in the sea, the deep sea. So, when we talk about when we talk about uh, the joy of truth, when we talk about when we receive the truth, because sometimes when we receive the truth, it's not very comfortable. Sometimes it can be abrasive, and for some people, when you receive the truth, it's offensive. Uh, but the truth, it, it, it does one thing. It opens up your eyes to who and what you are and what you're doing. Right. Or what you shouldn't be doing. The truth, it uncovers, it undresses, it exposes you uh, to what, what's the real you, what's the real us, and what we should be doing. So, and it's uncomfortable. It's very But it uncomfortable. has to be dealt with. <clears throat> so when we talk about marriage, and we're talking about a relationship, mm -hmm. And we have two people that have a truth, and then we're trying to read the truth. It becomes, it becomes like a sometimes like a sparring match. Right. But when we put aside who's going to try to keep score and think about what's really going on, is two people, and two people have hearts, and those two hearts are joined together. We're yeah. trying to work together to get something done. Then we can work together and, and, and focus on how God wants us to get it done. What does the word of God say about what we're doing? So, we have another scripture, and that's 1 Corinthians 13 and verse number 6. Okay. Oh, you was doing something? What is it? 1 Corinthians 13 and verse number 6. She was over here doing something, y'all. Okay. Then, so, 1 Corinthians 13. First Corinthians 13 and verse number 6. And it says, Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love never gives up, and its faith, hope, and patience never fail. Amen. So, you know, in this time and any other time, you know, we need to be walking in love. We need to have extra patience. You know, people get upset in the store, or they get upset in the parking lot. Or they get upset in in, the, in a car because somebody didn't make the light. Or somebody's still on their cell phone when they should be moving through the light. Oh, it's a lot of getting upset at home right now. Yeah. Because people are out of jobs. I was looking at the news the other day saying it's a, a domestic violence. It's, it has, it's it has increased. really mm -hmm. increased. So before we end today, that's something you know I really want to pray about. Because why are you taking out the frustrations of the world? On somebody that may have your back, praying for mm -hmm. you and doing all of these other things, you know, we we have to. That's to me. That's a form of losing hope. Yeah, 
You're right. I, I mean, even when I didn't think about that, I just mm-hmm. I just didn't really like go into deep thought about it. I saw a few things about it, but I think that again, when we talk about the joy of the truth, mm-hmm. then it also exposes things that could be going on at home exactly. that never has been addressed. Um, and or need some to be things addressed. that were going on, you was kind of overlooking it or blowing mm-hmm. it off or something. Is really becoming escalated right now because people are scared. Mm-hmm. They losing hope. They don't know who to turn to. Mm-hmm. You know, in, instead of turning to the one, yeah, they and just so, don't know. And so it's been some. It's been it's been a little friction here at the Johnson <laughs> residence too because some of our kids are kind of getting a little sharp with each other. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. you being you know being in the house cooped up. So we you know, I told that them. real quick. Go take a walk, go outside, go walk, go do something, you know. But I do understand, you know, that, you know, you, it's, it's just out of the norm when you can't go somewhere. Mm-hmm. But in all safety, you should be able to enjoy being in your home with your family. Right. You should be able to sit, have conversation, talk about life, mm-hmm. talk about God, talk about relationships, talk about things that, you know, you can improve on or things that can be discussed. So for the Johnson family, we've been doing quite a few of those things. You know, on Sunday, we ain't dismissing church just because we ain't there. We cut the TV on, we praising right in the front room. I get up, I sing, I do what I do. You know, and I do that as an example for them because I'm not going to let nothing in this world stop me from praising God. I'm not going to sit down in no chair and look at a service. If they have a praise and worship service before actually the word starts, then I know the songs. I'm up. I'm not gonna sit down because why am I gonna sit down when a God that loves me hasn't been sitting down? You know, making sure that uh, we have a place to eat, to to clothes to put on our back. We we can get in a vehicle and go. We can move with without assistance mm-hmm. of a walker. I'm gonna take advantage of that God, and so. Um, and also just playing games, you know. One thing I can say is our youngest daughter, you know, she ensures that, hey, we want to play something, we're doing something right. tonight, you know. Even if we don't feel like it, we're going to do it, you know. But we play the games and we have fun because it's important. It's important that you sit down. <laughs> oh, and she said, you can sing. That's <laughs> funny. Ooh. And she said, did she say you can sing? Well, who says am I singing? Huh? Sing me? No, no, no. You oh, she's going, yeah, I can sing, yeah. <laughs> it might not sound good, but I can do it. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, and I don't care. Because I think that, you know, <clears throat> if your voice ain't the best, doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. It's that your heart is connected to God doing right. praise and worship. You know, all that outside noise and all that other foolishness you shouldn't be thinking about. You should be thinking about how connected you are to God and all of what he... um does for you. Mm-hmm. And I don't, you know, I might be off key. I might be in B flat, but I should be in C minor. I don't know what it is. It don't <laughs> matter. It's just that at that point, I'm with him. Right. I'm connected. So um, we did. Uh, so we did read the First Corinthians. We did. Uh, this is interesting. <clears throat> I want to get to this. Okay, so you want me to start from the beginning? Mm, I don't know. Because right now, this this is, I mean, this is perfect word for today. Okay. It really is. So you don't want me to start from the beginning? Uh, yeah, anyway. go ahead. All right, so the, the the devotion for today, and we are, let me see if I can hold this up. It's probably going to be backwards. It's going to be backwards? Yeah. Of course That's it is. okay. Okay, so in marriage, we hold a powerful position of influence in each other's lives. We can spur one another on toward love and good deeds or cause people to stumble. We can encourage faith in the word or fall into doubt as we believe the enemy's lies. Mm -hmm. We can pursue obedience to God together or we can tolerate sin and rebellion in our home. Here comes the kicking killer questions. It says, is there any evil taking root in your household? Are you passive about violence or perversion in your entertainment? Ouch. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ouch for me. I'll be transparent. Is your marriage bed pure? 
Has bitterness or anger been stealing peace from your family? Okay. Is anyone tearing down your confidence in the word of God or your marriage vows? Which truths are delighting, excuse me, which truths are delighting your heart today? Is God the anchor for your soul? Does his peace sustain sustain, sustain you? Does his peace sustain you through hard times? Mm -hmm. That's important. It says, um, are you placing your identity, your future, and your possessions in his hands? Are you fully open with one another, confident in the faithful love between the both of you? Pray that your household will be filled with God's light and holiness. Put away any relationship or activity that tempts you to reject his truth. So I'm going to turn it over to you because there's some questions in there that look like you want to hear. And I'll, I'll work with you on that. Okay. So this first one I, I want to take, is there any evil taking root in your household? The only way you're going to know that if any that evil is taking root in your household is being in a position where you're walking with your spiritual eyes open. Mm -hmm. Because if it's just going about day to day and you so bogged down with the things that are going on in the world right now, so bogged down with work, that you just kind of overlooking the stuff that's going on, mm -hmm. that's not going to fly. You can't take hold of anything and get it out of there. If you don't even see that it's taking root in your household. Amen. And so, you know, um, so perversion and violence, that kind of hit me in the face. So you got to be careful of what you see, of what you watch on TV, because it can sear your conscience on some things. Mm -hmm. Because there are messages that some shows or some um, movies or whatever try to put out like a subliminal message and that's something that you have to be very careful of because again it could be a way for evil to take root in your home so I encourage you to be very observant of that mm -hmm. don't be passive about it uh, cause that's something that um, many people um I ain't going to say struggle. It's just that's many people are faced with. Right. Because you got cell phones in the house. People have access to stuff. And so it's not nothing to look over. Mm -hmm. And you need to pray about that because this is your home. This is supposed to be the sanctuary of peace that you go to when you leave work, when you're away from the rest of the parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And that home should be a place where you can have peace. That home should be a place where you can laugh. Because uh, we have been doing a lot of laughter because some people have been saying some funny yeah. stuff. Uh, and that's that's one thing I do thank God for. Even in the midst of all of this stuff uh, going on, we've really enjoyed some good quality family time. Yeah. You know, good conversation and, and great laughs. So. But I can say on a positive note, and I can't speak for all the families around the world or whatever, but I know it was a Walmart yesterday and we were going to buy some more, we was going to look for another game to play. And a lot of the family games were off the shelf. Yeah. So that's good. That was good. That means that people are finding things to do. Right. Where they can be able to fellowship together, you know, eat together, mm -hmm. get at that table and have some conversations. Right. Get at that table and talk about life. Get at that table and find out what's ticking inside your children's head. And if you don't have any children, then get at the table and sit with your spouse. Mm -hmm. And have some real conversations around just just mm -hmm. how much you love each other. And, and then I and then I want to say this: even if that situation is um, not present or able to be obtained yeah. right now, you sit at that table and you spend time with God. Amen. Spend time in His Word, asking Him, God, in this season, what is it that you want me to learn? You know, where are you directing me to? Mm -hmm. What do you want me to say to other people? How can I be used to, you know, bless others? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, give me strength and peace during this time. Yeah. 
you know, even when I'm too tired or frustrated and I can't pray for myself or my family, give me your strength and your peace to be able to do that. And you should. <clears throat> I'm going to say this, and you should be able to go to your spouse and say, look, it's been a tough one. My attitude ain't been good or whatever. Can you just pray for me? Mm-hmm. You should be able to say that to your own husband or your wife. You know, and even if you've been a butt and you've been very, very getting on the nerves of another individual, mm-hmm. in your home, you should be able to ask your spouse to pray for you because for whatever reason, you know, you just been frustrated. And it ain't got nothing always to do with the other person. It could just be some other stuff just bothering them. Right. But they should be able to come to you because you committed to to vows before God about how in sickness and in health mm-hmm. and good times and bad times and in 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 defeats and victory that you would be uh, standing side by side and back to back right. to pray for protection of your spouse. Uh, but you know what that is? <clears throat> That's an example of being able to walk in humbleness with your spouse. Mm-hmm. Remember we talked about that yeah. a long time ago. Humbleness, trusting, you know. I, I don't think there's, and it's so weird because sometimes you find out that over a long period of time in marriage there's still people, um, for some crazy reason, there's mm-hmm. still people that don't trust their spouse with their heart. Right. Yeah, that's kind of crazy, but it happens. Mm-hmm. And the only reason it happens like that because the truth is there knocking on the door. Nobody wants to open it and deal with what's inside. Exactly. And it's not that the door to it, it's the door to your heart. It's what's going on with you. If you can't trust your spouse with your heart, then you definitely got something unaddressed from whenever. Uh, way back when, when you was a child or whatever, or some past hurt that you got locked up in some deep depth of your heart that nobody can touch. Right. Well, you won't be truly free until you uh, allow that to be exposed. Exactly. And how does something like that get exposed? By embracing the truth. Mm-hmm. And it is not pretty, and it is not sexy, but it is necessary for your spiritual, physical, social, and emotional growth. Right. And you know, I'm just sitting up here uh, reading reading what Lawanda said, you know, that could be something that, that God was trying to tell the world. You know, the the idea and the whole uh, foundation of family mm-hmm. is not where it should be. Yeah. That is falling apart. Yeah. So I'm going to put y'all in a position where y'all going to be close to each other. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to see what you're going to do at that time. Now, I'm not speaking for God. This is just hypothetical. I'm going to see what you all going to do at that time. Are y'all going to do a lot of stuff where y'all working together but not ex- including me? Mm-hmm. Or y'all going to be doing stuff where you including me and you're working together and you're working on things. And when all this is done, mm-hmm. you have a more appreciative and more well-defined relationship with your maker. Right. You know, with your God. Because it's unfortunate. And it's sad that people are losing their lives, but the ones that are still here, some are still not focused on life itself. Right. Like the giver of life, the giver of love, the giver of healing, the giver of the building of the family. Mm-hmm. Some are still got their eyes focused on other things. And what we're teaching our children and it is not easy is that in famine, in pestilence, when something has been unleashed upon the earth, that is not the time as a Christian or a child of God to be separated from God or to turn, tuck, and run. It is the time to stand. It is the time to believe and trust that he is going to cover you underneath his feathers He's going to cover you. I'm not saying that God's a bird, but I'm just saying cover you up under the blood of the of Jesus. Mm-hmm. That you cover and that you can be able to walk in confidence and know that he's with you. Right. He desires to be with you and you should be looking after him. 
well, when this is all over, all people going to do is go back to what they was doing at first. Then those are the ones that are not going to be at home when the owner of the home returns back. All right. Yeah, because if that's, if that's your mindset, that I'm just going to do whatever, and then when all of this is gone, I'm going to go back, and I ain't going to be doing this, I'm not going to be doing that, that's okay. Yeah. One day you're going to wake up, and the owner going to be to return back to his house, and he's going to be already left. You're going to look around and there's a lot of people going to be gone and you ain't going to know where they are because you wasn't on watch. Mm -hmm. And so yes. this teaches us how to be on watch. It teaches us how to be on watch. And if you can be on watch for your family mm -hmm. and then knowing that, uh, like LaWanda, you know, I think she just put something up there about praying for friends mm -hmm. who have COVID-19, of course, is that when you are on watch, you praying for your family, yourself, and your and your others. I pray in the morning for our family. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lay with my wife. I'm going to pray before we get out that bed. Mm -hmm. I pray for the street and every family, even though we don't hang around or do all that stuff, but we, 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 we see each other, we talk to each other. I pray for every single family on this street. You know, and we have not, I don't think we've ever missed a day. And if we did, then I'm not trying to lie. But it's it, it, it we do it every day, mm -hmm. every day we praying over this street. And you know, and if you have a pastor, you know, they go through stuff too. Yeah. So pray for them. Yeah. So we pray over ours daily, mm -hmm. Pastor Roy Love, because mm -hmm. I mean they they got a lot on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> so you have to you have to lift your pastor up. They deal with a lot. Oh, let me read that. So, and Sherry says that that is, that is a concern. So many are just going through life, mm -hmm. but not realizing the change and the change in direction is needed. Right. Uh, turn back to God. Mm -hmm. And I praise God. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and so, so it's not easy and we're not right. perfect. And I ain't going to sit up here and say that I am, but I'm not a fool. So that's the thing. You know, you if you can make yourself be better or you can talk to your spouse about something or if it's just one of those tough conversations where they notice something with you right. and, and, and we are able to discuss it, it doesn't matter. It will come out how it's going to come out. But for us living for God, it came out in the way it needed to in order for it to be exposed and in order for it to bring some uncomfortable uncomfortableness <laughs> to the person. Right. So that, that way they don't think that, hey, that's really normal. Mm -hmm. You think that that's really how you're supposed to be conducting business? No. Mm -mm. So mm -hmm. when you have somebody that loves you enough to get beyond your feelings, right. and not, not to say that to trample on you, but to get past the fact that they're worried about what you're going to do mm -hmm. in response because they're looking deeper past the surface level and they're thinking about your soul and they're thinking about the impact that your behavior is having on the children. Right. But but not but not even that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even even with our loved ones, you know, and you being at a different angle and, uh -huh. and you're seeing some things, I think as a people, I mean us included, you yeah. know, if we're trying to progress and grow you know, the Bible talks about, you know, uh, being seated with wise counsel. Yeah. Well, what does that really mean? Does that mean that every conversation they're going to have with you, everything that they tell you is going to be all nice, nice, and we're just going to pat you? No, that's not what that means. But it doesn't mean being mean mm -hmm. and beating a person down either. But the thing is, we have to learn how to get out of our feelings and the truth is just the truth, especially if you know that person enough that they're telling you a certain thing out mm -hmm. of love, something that's going to develop you, encourage you, mm -hmm. you know, and not to put you down or bring harm to you. It's a mm -hmm. difference. Yeah. So I think as a people for us to grow, we have to learn how to make the determine the difference. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that and I'm just going to kind of sidestep. And just think about when we were playing games this week. Mm -hmm. You kind of find out the temperament of people in the house. You know, because <laughs> the rules say one thing, they right. want to do something else. And then they really they really don't 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 like a few things. 
But it's the rules of the game. Right. And so then when you win or lose, it can it can be a little different about how people respond yes, in the house. So, um, and look here, we done played life. We done played life twists and turns. We done mm. played trouble. We've played Clue three times, and we've not followed the rules not once. And we have not won. We have not guessed who the person is because for some reason, that's been one of the most difficult games to play. We've looked up YouTube to find out how to play Clue. It is hard. And so I don't know. It's probably us. I don't know. But <laughs> what I did find out is that, you know, you kind of can, you see your kids in a different light, boy. They, ooh, they, you know, one of them is very competitive, don't want to lose. Or, you know, oh, we even played uh, 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 Operation. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I thought I would be real good at that. And I, I only got one bone. And my uh, my 18-year-old, she got four bones and she won. You know, but it was funny trying to get those bones out of that man. And and every time you hit that thing it buzzed. So But you had, know, even when you even when you talk about, you know, the different temperaments and that, I mean it's the same thing mm-hmm. in life. Mm-hmm. So people gonna respond how they're gonna respond, but how are you gonna respond to the way that they respond? So that they can see the love of God. Exactly. Because it's so, you know, and you can't be telling them what they If I act like that, they're going to think I'm passive. Well, if you're worrying about what they think, you already lost the battle. Mm-hmm. Because you, you, you need to be thinking about how you can win a soul. Right. And and that's got to be very, you know, one thing about Jesus and the different things that he did. And I don't know everything about what's in the Bible, trust me. But I understand how he used to do little little things that that were out of out of the box mm-hmm. or, or, or contrary. It wasn't. It was not. A, it was. It was against the grain. So sitting down on his knees or squatting and drawing in the dirt and people passing by and nobody not talking, that's unusual. Right. But for the nosy person, they would say, "What are you doing?" Mm-hmm. And then in that time frame, questions come up right. or something comes up, and it's just a way to get you to think. Mm-hmm. Nobody. All I want. Everybody doesn't change overnight. Right. But if I can address something mm-hmm. in my mind that is plaguing me or tormenting me or in my heart that I can give over to God and that give me more territory over my own life and take away the devil's hold on my life, exactly. you are going in the right direction. Right. And God Let's not be that, that hamster on that wheel we've been talking about for yeah. the last three weeks. Hamster on the wheel. You know, it doesn't do anything but get you busy, tired, and nowhere. Because you're in the mm-hmm. same spot, you know. So, it just just take that into consideration, you know. If you want to grow, you want to improve, you're tired of being where you are, you know, we got to stop wearing our feelings on our sleeve and worry about, you know, how a message may have come across. If it's piercing this and it's something that's been going on here and here, then you might want to think about this. Yes, yeah, at least consider it. Yeah. Consider the fact that God loves you enough that He brought that person in your life to, to just to just to kind of be a little bit of a sandpaper to your wood, <laughs> try mm-hmm. to smooth out some of those rough edges. Right. But the issue is that if He didn't love you, He would just let you continue on doing what you exactly. do and not even say nothing to you about it or put you in a position where you would have to address something. So I think in that aspect, you know, as a as a husband, as a wife, as a team. Mm-hmm. It, it, it means that I love you enough to to have a conversation with you. You love me enough to have a conversation right. with you. When our kids are in that serious mode, daddy, mm-hmm. daddy, 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 this is how you be responding. Right. You know, and so I have to take in consideration that they tell them the truth. And it ain't the time to be trying to be right. Right. At that point, if they're and telling me something, point, do all that. You just have to yeah. just listen mm-hmm. and just, like you said, take that into consideration. Mm-hmm. And then that's the time. Okay, God, well, this was brought to my attention. Mm-hmm. So what can mm-hmm. I do to make it better? Mm-hmm. How can I move beyond that? And so when our kids are telling me that, and I might not want to hear it, I need to take. Uh, uh, the reason why I pay attention is because it, it can happen. <clears throat> Yeah, it can be it can be very very discouraging when your children buckle down <laughs> and they do tell you something and then you don't uh, acknowledge that fact that they are pointing out something in your character 
mm-hmm. that <clears throat> that needs to be um, addressed. Right. So no matter how it comes out, when we have those discussions, mm-hmm. you know, the first thing you say is, I don't act like that. But you know you do. Why? <laughs> <laughs> you know you do. So if your children see it, or others see it, mm-hmm. and if they love you enough to talk to you about it, then it's worth uh it's worth the conversation. Right. And it's worth the uncomfortableness. It's worth the exposure. It's worth applying it to the blood of Jesus. And it's exciting to see when it falls it falls away and melts away like butter. That now, mm-hmm. what was a staple in your character, what was hindering you, has now become something that's up under your feet. Right. And it's not attacking you anymore. And people will know that you're a changed person, if that makes sense. So I have a, I have a question. I want, I want y'all to think about it. <laughs> I want y'all to think about it this week. Am I more concerned about being uncomfortable or am I more concerned about growing and maturing as a person? As a person. It's not am I concerned about being uncomfortable or am I concerned about becoming that person that God created me to truly be? All right. What'd she say? She said, Uncle Bill is such a patient man. He helps keep me balanced. And me, for him, God knew what he was doing. Yeah. Because uh, right. I know I can be a, you know, a, I can be a pill. And a pill is sometimes something that you don't want to swallow. All right. Look how she looks. Sometimes you got these little bitty ones that are easy to swallow. And sometimes you got these big horse pills that might make you choke a little bit to get hung up like that. So she's trying to say, I'm a horse pill. She sounds a good kid. She's out of hospital. So, uh, <clears throat> but we've learned in whatever pill we are, and no matter how it gets, we, we've learned to understand that right. we can we can mm-hmm. have a conversation. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it may be at the beginning of the week. Sometimes it may be, sometimes a question can come up at the beginning of the week, and it is very, very uh, tough mm-hmm. to answer, but by the end of the week, it would have at least been an envelope open, a wound uncovered, a right. band-aid taken off of, 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 you know, so mm-hmm. we can so we can start the conversation about it. Doesn't mean that it's gonna be solved mm-hmm. here right then. The issue is to have the conversation about whatever it is, because when you're telling your spouse the truth, when you're telling your children the truth, when your children are telling you the truth, then it is a. Uh, it's 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 an opportunity. It's not so much mm-hmm. of a defense, because uh, that's what normally we do. We defend. Right. Our, we try to defend our, our stand on mm-hmm. whatever it is, uh, but they're trying to tell us in a in a in a mm-hmm. way that we love you and we we we're trying to help you, mm-hmm. or we notice something and you do it, and maybe you're doing it unconsciously, and it's right. so, or it's a habit. Because mm-hmm. if you do something over 20 sometimes, it becomes a habit. So it's going to take that long and that much discipline in order to take that habit and turn it into a habit that's a healthy one. That's so right. if I'm eating fried chicken and I've been doing it for a long time, then it's going to take the discipline of over 20 some odd days mm-hmm. for me to to, 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 to dial it back. Right. <clears throat> Not to mean I'm going to stop, but to dial it back until I get to the point where the healthy choices of eating over the unhealthy choices of eating is more prevalent. And I have adopted that. So I want you to, and I'm saying this for Millicent and myself and anybody, is I want you to be strategic in telling your spouse the truth. And I want you to be strategic in understanding that there's only two ways that it can go down. Mm-hmm. It can be that it's going to be something that God exposes and heals instantly, or mm-hmm. it's a process. It's the only two. That is it. It's, just, it's either either God going to deliver the person then, or you're going to teach him or her about the process of being healed over something and delivered over something that when it appears and rears this nasty, ugly, disgusting head again, it's not even an afterthought about how that bothers you, it don't bother you. It don't right. it don't even it don't even make your eyebrow raise up. It yep, doesn't bother exactly. you. You know, when some when your eyebrow go up again, you know it's still it's still a niche. 
<laughs> it's still something that can kind of get on your nerves, but. Um, and I wanted to go back and so what Charlie uh, said before it disappeared, mm -hmm. she said, I don't have to think I want to grow in God, you know. And so once you once you get to that place that it's really just a no brainer, uh -huh. you know, you want to move, you know, you want better then what they say when you when you when you know better, you do better. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> so that's what Excuse we have to pray for each other that we all get to that to that place. Yeah. You know, so Charlie, I agree with you on that. And then Sherry, I truly understand because I was in the same place. So I get it. <laughs> you know, um, he was on a different level than I was, you know, this second time around. So that's another conversation. That's another conversation. <laughs> But um, and Sherry, yeah, I I understand truly. So um, hmm, this this is this was really good for today. Yes, yeah, been. Very I mean, as far as these uh, this is one of those things that's some tough conversations. Mm. You know, some tough <clears throat> things to do, uncomfortable. But mm. again, I just I guess I just can't get off that that statement. You know, in order to grow, you have to go through the uncomfortable. Places, but it's also, but I also want to make sure we go back to the title too because it's talked about the joy of the truth. Mm -hmm. So, think about the journey when you get to that truth. Mm -hmm. Whatever in life has been exposed, right. it's been exposed because God wanted to be addressed mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that you and I can be better. But the journey will never be forgotten, yeah, because when you were going through the journey to truth, everybody else was going with you. Because they watched. They saw the change. Mm -hmm. The children saw the change. The people at the job saw the change. Right. So now they see that you are a different you. And now they want to be more inquisitive about the person that was squatting and drawing in the dirt. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to be more inquisitive about you because what used to get a rise out of you doesn't bother you anymore. You don't respond in that way. So right, right. I've been watching you. Why did why you you know you normally just go off and you know and it, but hey, you just really you don't that, that doesn't bother you anymore. And then you can talk about I had to look inward. Mm -hmm. Or something was brought to my attention. Right. Somebody loved me enough to say, you know, um that right there is unbecoming of the person that I fell in love with. Mm -hmm. That's unbecoming of the person that um, I, I I am attached to in spirit, mind, and body. You mm -hmm. know, so it, you know, it, so just just think about the process. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be overnight, right? But the fact that God loves us enough to tell us the truth in mm -hmm. love, uh, we have the opportunity <clears throat> to take a journey. With him, mm -hmm. our spouse takes that journey with us. Right. We are able to be a, you know, we're able to impact mm -hmm. lives in a way that is it, it takes takes time. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back to what Lawanda said. She said she was there's, there's friends uh, that she has said has COVID nineteen. Right. So we're gonna just pray. Okay. We're gonna ask God to do what He always does, and that's heal. Set free, deliver, and bring together mm -hmm. some things so that we can uh, be in one accord. Okay. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to pray. We thank you, Father, for giving us another day to grace the face of the earth. You did not have to allow us to be alive today. So let Millicent and myself, as well as our family, take full advantage of this day, for this is the day that the Lord thy God hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We pray for every single person in the world. We pray, Father God, that your spirit shall hover over every home, every family. We pray for those that have been inflicted with this, this disease, and that you cover them with the blood of Jesus, from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, that their lives have meaning. And that in this time, make sure that we are seeking after the master. Father, we pray for families that 
are, are at odds with one another that you bring peace. We pray, Father God, for children that want to be at school and that, that schools are providing the best that they can in the best ways that they can through videos, through work, whatever we can do to reach out. And Lord, we pray that you continue to shower us with your love and that we reciprocate and duplicate that love to others. Thank you, Father God, for all that you do. Thank you for what you have done in the past and thank you for what you're going to do for us in the future. We pray for all the pastors over this world, the ones that are lifting up the name of Jesus, the ones that are praying for coverings over people and all of the ones that they are associated with, the ones they know and the ones they don't know. Give those pastors the strength because I'm pretty sure they're getting phone calls about all different kinds of things at this time that they're able to help, comfort, and give spiritual direction to the way people should go. Lord, we thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, it's been another strong week. We had an outstanding time last week. We greatly appreciate all of the um, the, the collaboration because this is nothing independent of ourselves. We just like anybody else. We can fall short of the glory of God and we can stand up and rise again. No matter what, we choose each other. We choose the word. We choose family. So I'm asking you to be patient we're asking you to pray over your street, pray over the people that you come in contact with. Yes. You know, it's very disturbing when a person can be next door to you and then something happens out of the ordinary and you say, every day I saw this person, they seemed to be okay. Mm -hmm. Well, seem to ask them if they okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm not trying to be funny, but seem to ask, seem to ask okay. them, are they okay? How right. are you doing? You know, and then, you know, just put that out there. But, you know, if you live on the street, you live on a cul-de-sac, you, you may not know every neighbor, but, you know, pray over your street. Yes. Pray over your neighborhood. That's your immediate sanctuary is that street, mm -hmm. that apartment complex. Pray. If you stay in a trailer house, I don't care where you live, mm -hmm. pray over that immediate area right. that is covered by the blood of Jesus. And um, <clears throat> I just want, want to say, uh, too, <clears throat> for uh, Mary Edens and family who uh, lost her sister this week, yeah. we want to lift her and her family up in prayer. And for Joseph Anderson and his family who lost their mom uh, last week. Yeah. We want to make sure that we lift those two families up in prayer. And I don't, I don't know. We know of a tragic death that happened earlier this week. Um, very tragic. And so we'll just be praying for the family. Uncle Oliver, I know you know if you're watching who we're talking about. We just, mm -hmm. we just, it was very bad. It was a very tragic death. So yeah. people are losing their lives at such a young age. But yeah. we, we're praying. We're believing and we're trusting God for his uh So for the for the Dennis family. Okay. Yes, definitely. Yeah. All right, so Marriage right. Matters family. You all enjoy your Saturday. Stay yeah. safe. Enjoy your family. Have game time, family time, prayer time. Uh make sure you say make sure you practice your social distancing distance. That's right. Six feet, Just six feet away. Mm -hmm. Let's have a great weekend. All right. And we'll see blessed. you next Saturday. Same time, same place. I won't say same bedtime, same bed channel, but. But you're not saying what you're supposed to, you're supposed to say the, the ending. So, uh, we'll see you next Saturday and discuss more Marriage Matters. Because, because your marriage, marriage matters. matters. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hey, Miss Gay. Hey, Miss Gay.